federal government, in its uh, effort to empty out the uh, offshore detention centres and uh, finish uh, cleaning up uh, Labor's uh, mess when uh, they were in charge of uh, border policy, they've closed the uh, Manus Island detention centre. Uh, they gave plenty of warning to the 600 men who are located there, but now the men are refusing to leave. Uh, they're claiming it's not safe for them in uh, Papua New Guinea. It's it's ironic that uh, the, these men, they, they didn't want to be in this detention centre and the uh, refugee advocates said, oh, we want them, you know, closed down. The government's doing that, but now they're saying they're uh, staying there. Um, and, and you can and you can see why that uh, why they're choosing to stay there is because they want to try and use this opportunity to pull a stunt and try and you know, embarrass and uh, shame the government, claiming oh the government's you know cut off our water, electricity, our food. You know they're being cruel. They're you know uh, to uh, uh, torturing them, uh, of committing violence against them. I don't know how you know, closing down a centre is uh, violence, and so the refugee advocates, they're uh, ma making as much noise as they can again. Um, but uh, and alternative arrangements have been arranged at other places on, on the island, so, you know, there, there, there has been um, so, something else arranged, so, you know, they're not just, you know, out you go and, like, you know, fend for yourself. Um, but, yeah, it's... The, the, this whole episode is just, you know, another, you know, attempt by, you know, the, these alleged refugees and their, their advocates to see if they can, you know, harass and intimidate the, the government to uh, back down. It's a classic case of the lawyer activist class, um, you know, uh, whispering into the ear uh, of these migrants, giving them false hopes uh, to advance their own radical agenda. Uh, you also see, there's plenty of parallels. Uh, I think the left in general uses these people as props to actually advance uh, a multicultural or diversity agenda or just a progressive agenda in general. Uh, the U.S. border wall, for example, uh, the, well, parts of it, the, the, there's a wall, the U.S. border. Um, the, there's groups, uh, apparent humanitarian groups, that put you know, bottles of water and food out there and actually encourage people to cross. I wonder why they, they do that. I wonder what their motives are. And I wonder what uh, the motives are of these, you know, apparent uh, humanitarians that uh, whisper in the ears of these uh, so-called asylum seekers um, and, and, and what they're actually trying to get at. Uh, they, uh, the government, should I say, has, uh, well, they, they've provided them with an opportunity to resettle in PNG. Um, they are free from the ravages of war uh, and they do have some kind of uh, support uh, outside of the uh, parameters of uh, the detention centre and they are free to go home uh, when the situation or settles wherever they've come, come from. Of course, there may be some who are political or uh, prisoners or who are from a religious minority who may not be able to go home and uh, they can stay in PNG. But there are plenty uh, of people uh, who could go back to Syria, who could go back to Iraq uh, in times in the future. And with Syria, for instance, we're, we're actually seeing more people come into Syria each year now than leave. So the situation is settling there. Uh, Assad, uh, who's got about two thirds of the country under his thumb, is consolidating with the help of the Russians and people will be going back. Um, they weren't invited. Uh, yes, refugee advocates making noise again for their own political gains. Uh, and what can you do? You need to be tough, but you need to be fair. And that's what I think we're doing here. And, yeah, 
the only obligation that the Australian government has is to make sure that they're safe from political persecution. I mean, it's the, the government, you know, isn't obliged to provide them, you know, with uh, a five-star lifestyle in Australia. That's not the, the purpose of a uh, refugee program. And, you know, that's why the, the government is, like, if they are genuine refugees, they're not going to send them back home. They're going to resettle them into a, a third country. And the, the government, to its credit, and, you know, P Immigration Minister Peter Dutton's been outstanding on this, that uh, anyone who, you know, comes to, who has come to Australia by boat will, will never settle here because if, if they are allowed to, you know, come to Australia, you know, eventually, even, even if it's after five years or so, that'll encourage the people smuggling trade again because the people smugglers will say, oh, you know, you may have to wait, you know, a few years in a detention centre, but you'll eventually uh, get to Australia. That's why the, the government is being so adamant here. Yes, and it's, um, I think it's good because we don't want people coming here on boat. Uh, we don't want children drowning at sea. We don't want to be facilitating, you know, a vile people smuggling industry. But we still want to be compassionate. I think, uh, from my uh, best recollection, Australia has one of the highest intakes of humanitarian uh, refugees or, or what have you on, you know, on humanitarian grounds. Um, quite frankly, uh, people who come here deserve uh, some basic services uh, that everyone else gets uh, who come to Australia, but uh, they also need to work, they also need to, to put out, but we also should welcome them as well. And I, I just think this is obvious, this is common sense, but nobody should be afforded a five-star uh, accommodation or, or way of life, and certainly... I do think that this tough stand will stop people drowning at sea. Uh, and I think that we definitely need to uh, look at this as a great success, that that, uh, that Tony Abbott and Peter Dutton uh, did. Uh, Turnbull uh, and then uh, Dutton continued. Uh, it's one of the great successes of this uh, Liberal government uh, Liberal coalition government uh, stopping the boats, stopping people drowning at sea, and controlling uh, the immigration. And obviously, immigration's been cut, and I think it needs to be cut in half again. But certainly, we are taking strides in the right direction. And the government there, they're smart enough to know that you know the public is supportive of their position. I mean, let's remember that in 2013, the Australian voters, they turfed out a, a Labor government which had opened up the borders again, let in you know, 50,000 uh, vote people and elected in its place uh, the Abbott government, which uh, pledged to stop the votes and you know, delivered on that promise. So the, the public has made it pretty clear, you know, what their stance is. And, you know, these, you know, refugee advocates can carry on, you know, all, the, all they like. But, but the fact is that the public, they want strong borders. They, they don't want us to turn into what Europe is, where, you know, millions of uh, migrants, you know, f uh, flooding in, you know, boats coming in uh, on a daily basis. No, uh, we don't, uh, we, but we are seeing European nations um, look to the Australian model of, of merit-based uh, immigration. You're also seeing Donald Trump uh, talking about uh, pursuing a merit-based immigration system as well. So I think that this strong uh, border protection uh, strategy has uh, been great because not only has it, uh, uh, you know, uh, preserved the sovereignty of our borders, but it has also been a great uh, example uh, to countries across the globe uh, who are struggling uh, with the effects of mass immigration that are straining their uh, welfare systems, their prison systems, um, and their kind of cultural fabric. So. I think that Australia, with the merit-based immigration system, uh, the resettlement of boat people uh, is a shining light to the world on how to be tough but 
but fair uh, in this uh, uncom- in this uh, uncompromising, uh, you know, uh, war on terrorism that's happening as well. You need to be tough. You need to be vigilant. Um, otherwise, there will be attacks, as you have seen in Western Europe, uh, as you have seen in America recently on the streets of New York. So, the reason why we are safe is be- is. Uh, the reason why we are safe is because we are not a complacent nation. Yeah, and it's de- uh, definitely uh, one of, despite all the government's problems, it's one area which they're uh, doing you know, really uh, good work in the interests of us. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net. And visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.